Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video will be slightly different than the ones I typically make. Some of you guys have been wanting me to make this style of content where I do more talking and explaining opposed to showing benchmarks. So I figured I'd give it a shot. So make sure you guys let me know down below if you like this type of video or not. So the topic of today's video is Navi. I know some of you guys have been asking me about Navi for a while now. So in this video I want to give you guys my general thoughts on AMD's latest GPUs. Before getting into it I want to clarify that I will be buying a Navi 5700 XT to review in the next few days. So regardless of my thoughts and opinions I'll still be getting a car to do some testing. With that being said let's get into it. I made this quick office calc spreadsheet showing Navi along with some of Nvidia's GPUs. I have the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT in the column where they intend to compete. The 5700 is positioned to compete against the RTX 2060 and the 5700 XT against the RTX 2070. Now I am aware Nvidia has just recently released the new super cards which will launch July 9th. I'll get to that later in the video. I first want to go through the specs and benchmarks AMD has released of the cards. Navi will be running AMD's new RDNA architecture opposed to GCN which has been used by AMD since way back in the HD 7000 series. The RX 5700 will have a base clock of 1465 MHz and a boost clock of up to 1725 MHz. While the RX 5700 XT will have a base clock of 1605 MHz and a boost clock of up to 1905 MHz. The interesting thing you will notice between Navi and the Vega cards is the much lower amount of compute units. 40 for the 5700 XT and 36 for the 5700 compared to a whopping 56 for the Vega 56 60 for the Radeon 7 and 64 for the Vega 64. This is very interesting because it shows just how much more powerful each compute unit is compared to Vega. Now I am aware there is a clock difference and it's most likely not an apples to apples comparison but there is definitely a massive improvement per compute unit. I am really interested to see the bigger Navi cards coming down the line. A larger 60 plus CU die running 7 nanometers on the new RDNA architecture would really show Navi's true potential. With AMD just recently registering RX 5800, RX 5800 XT, RX 5850, 5850 XT, RX 5900, RX 5900 XT and finally RX 5950 and 5950 XT names. This leads me to believe AMD might finally try to compete against Nvidia in the high end starting in 2020. The RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT in my opinion are low to mid tier cards AMD plans on releasing. Sort of placeholders kinda like the Radeon 7 is in the high end. I personally feel like Nvidia knew AMD was going to start closing the gap with RDNA which is why they released the supercars to try to quell their momentum. Another thing I want to briefly mention is the performance increase per watt compared to Vega. Navi is seeing a 1.5x increase in performance per watt compared to Vega 64. Keep in mind the Navi die is much much smaller at 251mm squared while the Vega 64 has a 495mm squared die. Navi is also using the 7 nanometer process while Vega 64 uses a 14 nanometer fabrication process. Some of you guys have seen my Vega 64 versus Radeon 7 power consumption videos. The Radeon 7 running the same clocks as a stock Vega 64 consumes about half the power per clock cycle while yielding better performance. I am really interested to see how low these new RDNA cards will undervolt and just how efficient you can tune them. Now let's get to some of the benchmarks. We've seen a few benchmarks from AMD showing Navi competing against its RTX rivals. Starting off with the 5700, 
we see it doing quite well against the RTX 2060 across the board, especially on games where Vega is slower than Turing. The interesting thing I noticed in these benchmarks is the huge improvements they've made to esports titles like Apex Legends and Overwatch, which are games Vega falls victim to Turing. Now, keep in mind these are all AMD benchmarks, so performance may vary. Next, we have the 5700 XT. In these graphs, we have a few games where Vega has struggled against its RTX counterparts. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is notorious for giving lower performance on Vega compared to Turing. But we can see here the RX 5700 XT not only caught up to Turing, but is actually beating it by 2%. Another game where Vega typically lags behind Turing is The Witcher 3, which is also running faster on RDNA compared to Turing. Metro Exodus as well has seen a very large improvement. AMD even went as far as putting a little note stating both cards were ran using Ultra slash Max settings while utilizing the best API for both cards, which is a lot more information than they usually reveal during these types of comparisons, which is very promising. It will be really interesting to see how the new RDNA architecture handles DirectX 11 games, where Nvidia typically gains ground against AMD. It seems like AMD has really put some effort in improving DX11 performance. It also seems like RDNA handles tessellation better than GCN, which is also great news. Now, with the performance numbers out, let's go back to our office calc sheet and talk about the new supercards and my general thoughts on the pricing and performance. Based on the information AMD has given us, the RX 5700 will be slightly faster than the RTX 2060. The 5700 XT will be slightly faster than the RTX 2070. The RTX 2060 Super will likely edge the RX 5700 or be very close in performance. The 2060 Super has a 13% increase in CUDA cores which will definitely close the gap on the RX 5700. The pricing is quite close on both cards as well. 380 for the 5700 and 400 for the 2060 Super. Just like the RX 5700 will likely be faster than the RTX 2060, the 5700 XT will also likely be faster than the RTX 2070. The 5700 XT will also be slightly slower than a 2070 Super in my opinion. I also suspect the 5700 XT will be slightly slower than a 2070 Super. The RTX 2070 Super has a 11% increase in CUDA cores, which will definitely help making itself slightly faster. Now we still have the 5700 XT 50th Anniversary Edition. This card is only clocked about 80 MHz higher than a regular 5700 XT. That is definitely not enough to close in the gap the 2070 Super will create. Nvidia is definitely trying everything they can to make AMD's new Navi GPU launch as difficult as possible. I personally think the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT will perform faster than the 2060 and the 2070 and likely perform slightly slower than the supermodels, but they will also be slightly less expensive to buy. Turing has been out for nearly a year now and has seen many driver optimizations. Navi might see bigger performance improvements once drivers mature, especially since this is a completely new architecture. So you always have that to keep in mind. In my personal opinion, I feel like Navi is just too expensive for the performance. The same goes for the new supercards being released, and Turing for that matter. With the drama circling AMD turning the RX 690 into the 5700 XT and Nvidia selling cut down versions of GPUs at gross price premiums, it just seems like we can't win on either end. Hopefully the Ryzen 3000 series nets enough profit to AMD for them to really start pushing their graphics cards department to more aggressively compete against Nvidia. Until then, I guess we're stuck with these ridiculously high price premiums. But to wrap things up, 
I think RDNA is a massive improvement in the right direction for AMD. The price they're charging for the 5700 and the 5700 XT are just simply too high in my opinion. But the way the GPU market is right now, it was kind of expected. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Peace.